Food for brain. Just like every organ, the body needs food for nourishment. The brain needs to be fed too. Though the brain is relatively a small organ, weighing about 1.4 kilo, about 2% of the total body weight, it uses about 20% of the oxygen that is used by the entire body while at rest and eats up about a quarter of the energy produced by the body. In fact, the brain is the largest consumer of the energy that our body produces. Just like petrol fills your car, glucose fills your, uh, fills your brain. In the absence of the proper supply of the glucose to the brain, the ability of the brain to concentrate is affected badly and leads to short-term memory loss and fatigue. One more factor that can often lead to some loss of memory over the years is the generation of free radicals in the body. Free radicals are the toxic forms of oxygen that are created during normal cellular reactions. Small amount of free radicals in the body are a good thing, but too much of their bombardment accelerate aging and diseases. Food containing more of antioxidant or antioxidant supplements can help to protect from the damage caused by free radicals excess. Antioxidants can be vitamins, minerals, hormones, or enzymes. Although a certain amount is manufactured in, in the body as enzymes or hormones, most of the antioxidants come from fruits and vegetables. So along with the constant supply of the glucose to the brain, it also needs good amount of antioxidants to take care of free radical damage. Researchers have proved that certain kind of food play a significant role in the improvement of memory and keeping the brain cells active. Some of them are whole grain cereals, walnuts, pumpkin, uh, pumpkin seeds, tomatoes, broccoli, citrus and fresh fruits, spinach, blueberries, green tea, leafy green vegetables, water, herbs. Keeping a check your lifestyle. Modern lifestyle has its drawbacks like poor diet, stress, lack of sleep, smoking, pollution, etc., which damage fragile brain cells. Certain pharmaceutical drugs and alcohol is, uh, also cause severe memory loss. The level of pollution of various kinds leads to problem and learning difficulties in kids, which persist in adulthood. Alzheimer's disease has become so common that it is now accepted as a disease of the elderly. Some of the things that we need to check and change in our lifestyle Food intake Some suggestions for the proper intake of food are Avoid junk food Today, junk food has become a part of modern lifestyle. We all know that eating junk food on a regular basis is not only harmful for our brain cells but also for our overall health. So I'm not going to advise you not to eat junk food as you already know it quite well. Instead, I would like to ask you a simple question. Do you think if we use the petrol we use in car to run an airplane it will fly smoothly? Isn't uh, airplane fuel more refined? Well, we cannot use normal petrol in an airplane because we know that while driving a car, if some impurity comes in the petrol, at the most the car will stop on the road. We can leave the car on the road and call a mechanic. But we cannot take uh, such a risk in the case of an airplane. How do you want your life to be? Like an airplane flying high at a good speed without any brakes? Or like a car that can stop anywhere? Now the choice is yours. If you want to travel in a smooth, uh, safe flight, check the quality of petrol you are putting into your vehicle. The kind of food you are giving to your body. Here are some shocking facts 
about junk food to help you decide its harmful effects on the body. 99% fast food contains a taste enhancing agent called MSG, monosodium glutamate, which is responsible for more than 90% diseases in our body, including cancer, heart attack, high blood pressure, tooth decay, and other diseases. Fats from junk food trigger the urge to eat more. This effect can last for several days. Aspartan, an artificial low-calorie sweetener, commonly included in most of the fast food and soft drinks, mm, is approximately 200 uh, times sweeter than a sugar and causes a number of mental illness. Neuroscience says sometimes the symptoms appear only after 90% of the neurons of a particular area are dead. Heavy consumption of soft drinks spills out huge amount of calcium, magnesium and other trace minerals from our body. To neutralize the ill effects of a glass of soft drink, the human body needs 32 glasses of water intake. Taking the junk out of the junk food Here are a few tips on how you can include healthy food in your daily routine even while you eating uh, out. Choose fast food restaurants that offer healthier choices. Choose food and beverages that are made up uh, mostly of ingredients that offer nutrients along with calories. Enjoy freshly squeezed orange juice instead of canned juices or soft drinks. Avoid other sweetened beverages. Buy a grilled uh, sandwich or a whole grain bun instead of chips or pizza or french fries. Avoid drugs. A number of prescriptions and over-the-counter medications can interfere with our memory. Antidepressants, anti-anxiety medicines, muscle relaxants, tranquilizers, sleeping pills, and pain medications given after surgery can have a negative impact on our brain. As you age and your metabolism slows down, medicines tend to uh, stay in the system for longer and this can also have an adverse effect on you. Make a list of medicines you are taking, including any purchased from your pharmacy, and take it to your doctor. They can decide if you have any drug-related memory problems and alter your uh, medication if necessary. Also, avoid self-medication at any cost. Avoid alcohol. In today's stressful life, alcohol has proved to only make concentrating more difficult. You cannot drink and think too well at the same time. Adopting a vegetarian lifestyle. In earlier times, a lot of studies supported non-vegetarian diet, but now the opposite. Latest researchers show that a vegetarian diet helps to boost your memory and concentration. Earlier, the studies focused on nutritional deficiency uh, of a vegetarian diet, but now they confirm the health benefits of meat-free diet. In July 2009, the American Dietetic Association concluded that appropriately planned vegetarian diets include total vegetarian or vegan diets are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and the treatment of certain diseases. Benefits of being vegetarian You will prevent the diseases. An estimated 70% of all diseases, including one-third of all cancers, are diet-related. A vegetarian diet reduces the risk for chronic degenerative diseases such as obesity, coronary artery disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and certain types of cancer including colon, breast, prostate, stomach, lung, and esophageal cancer. A vegetarian diet is inherently 
helpful because vegetarians consume less animal fat and cholesterol, vegans consume no animal fat or cholesterol, and instead consume more fiber and more antioxidant-rich vegetables. Fiber-rich foods uh, also help to prevent constipation. You will live longer. Studies show that you can add about 13 healthy years to your life by switching from a non-vegetarian diet to a vegetarian one. Residents of Kinoa, Japan have the longest life expectancy among Japanese and most likely the longest life expectancy in the world. Their secret, a low-calorie diet of unrefined complex carbohydrates, fiber-rich fruits and vegetables and soy. You will reduce your risk of foodborne illness. Foods rich in protein such as meat, poultry, fish and seafood are frequently involved in foodborne illness outbreaks. Physical exercise. Exercise increases the flow of oxygen-rich blood to the brain, promoting clear thinking and sharper recall. It helps to maintain a healthy blood sugar level and also releases positive chemicals in the brain, which can help stimulate memory function. Regular exercise helps us to cope with stress and to stay healthy, all of which lead to better concentration and memory. Even after knowing the benefits of physical exercise, we give less importance to it as we are busy with our work. Even children nowadays don't do enough physical activities as they spend most of their playing time on computers and mobile phones. Once a wise man was asked, what do you think is the strangest thing about human beings? He replied, the strangest thing about human beings is that first they invest their health to gain wealth and later they reinvest their wealth to regain their health. There are plenty of ways to make sure you are getting regular exercise. For short journeys, walk. Uh, for short journeys, walk rather than taking the bus or a car. Use the stairs instead of the, of the lift uh, or escalator. Join a fitness or yoga class. If you work in an office, go out for a walk at lunch time rather than staying at your work desk. Plan with the friends to go jogging or uh, jogging or play tennis, for example, on a regular basis. Avoid watching too much TV. Watching TV is something virtually everyone enjoys, but did you know that TV can actually be harmful for you? Some of the ways in which watching too much television adversely affects your brain. Television makes your brain dull. You might find it unbelievable, but the fact is that your brain is more active when you are sleeping than when uh, you are watching television. Excessive television viewing can have a detrimental effect on the health of your brain as it's largely determined by how much you actively use your brain. It may also cause degenerative brain disorders later in life such as dementia and Alzheimer's disease. One of the reasons why brain activity is low when watching television is you don't really have to do any thinking. When you read, for example, you have to mentally create images of what you are reading, so while doing so, you are effectively exercising your brain. In fact, reading may help to offset some of the harmful effects television has on the brain. Short attention span. Excessive television viewing can cause a person to develop a short attention span and increase the risk of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in children and adults. This is thought to be due to the frequent scene changes that occur with modern day video edits. If you compare an old film with films of today, for example, you will notice that older movies had much longer scene changes. Cuts that occur too frequently can make a video difficult to follow. 
impaired brain development in children. Watching television appears to be especially harmful for children as their brain has not yet fully developed. Increased television viewing in children tends to impair frontal lobe development which is responsible for impulse control and one's ability to concentrate. This may result in inappropriate behavior and learning difficulties in school. A perfect tool to program the mind. The main concern with watching TV is that you have no control over the content that your mind is exposed to. Some things shown uh, in various programs may be good, while others may not be so. TV provides easy access to all kinds of things to your subconscious mind. Various programs shown on different channels may create a feeling of inferiority, increases expectations, and can even instill fear in mind of young people. Programs related to crime and violence also sometimes result in real-life crime. Children often imitate what they see on screen. The negative effects of TV violence are being passed on to young children, and that's one of the major reasons of increasing aggression amongst children as well as youth. Um, although your mind knows that whatever is shown on TV is not real, your uh, subconscious believe, uh, it, believe it to be real. Increasing extra kilos. Most of the times when people eat while watching TV, they often end up eating more than required, especially if they are eating their favorite snack like chips or biscuits or sweetened beverages and the result is those bulges around your back and waist. That's why in the 1990s, man was flat while uh, the TV was broad and the today's scenarios the TV has gone flat and the man is so fat. Addiction Watching TV causes the body to release the chemicals called endorph endorphins that make the body feel good. These endorphins are a natural sedative with properties similar to heroin. It's therefore not only possible but probable to become physically addicted to TV. A person he, uh, who is unable to view their favorite television program is likely to display similar withdrawal symptoms as a drug addict. He may become angry, anxious, and will go to great lengths to watch his program. I'm not saying don't watch TV at all. All you need to do is control the time you spend on it and also keep a check on the content you are watching. You can utilize your square uh, spare time in more useful activities like exercise, reading, interacting with friends and family, and activities that are crucial for achievement of your personal goals. Good sleep. It's no secret that a good night's sleep makes you feel better. It not only gives your body time to relax and recharge, it also crucial to your brain's ability to learn and remember. When you go to sleep, your brain is still awake. In fact, when you sleep, the consumption of oxygen to the brain increases because at that time your brain is busy in reorganizing all the information that got stored in it throughout the day and forming memories. In children and teens, sleep also helps support growth and development. The key thing is to stick to a regular sleeping pattern so that your body can maintain a regular rhythm. Try to get up at the same time every day. Even on weekends, students, students and people who sleep and wake up at different times during the day often face problems of concentration. The same problem is faced by students who reduce their sleeping time during exam days. Amount of sleep needed Everyone's individual sleep needs vary as each one of us have different routine, eating habits, work pattern, etc. In general, most health 
Uh, most healthy adults are built for 16 hours of wakefulness and need an average of 8 hours of sleep at night. Contrary to common myth, the need for sleep does not decline with age, but the ability to sleep for 6-8 hours at one time may be reduced. Young, younger people seem to need more sleep than older people, and the younger people, particularly babies who sleep for about 12 hours a day, have more information to lay down into memories. How to get good night's sleep? Sleep problems are usually caused by lifestyle rather than a sleep disorder. If you are sleep de deprived, you are at risk of developing a number of serious health problems and your ability to learn and retain new information may be impaired. Sleep is essential for effective memory storage and retrieval. According to the leading sleep researchers, there are techniques to combat common sleep problems. Keep a regular sleep-wake schedule. Comfortable pillows and mattresses are also important. Don't drink or eat caffeine uh, two to three hours before bed and minimize daytime use. Don't smoke, especially near uh, bedtime or if you get up in the night. Avoid alcohol and heavy meals before sleep. Get regular exercise. Before going to bed, avoid activities that stimulate your mind like watching TV, movie, or working in computer or laptop, etc. Minimize noise, light, and excessive hot and cold temperatures where you sleep. Develop a regular bedtime and go to bed at the same time each night. Try taking a hot bath or drinking a hot non-caffeinated uh, drink before going to bed. You can also try some relaxation techniques like deep breathing, meditation, visualization, uh, muscle relaxation, etc. Avoid multitasking. Multitasking is an avoidable feature of our 24-7 lifestyle. Multitasking is probably productivity's biggest enemy. Handling too many things at one time generally leads to forgetfulness. Unfortunately, this has become a way of life of each individual, a working woman or uh, a housewife. A man also deals with a lot of many things at the job as well as at home. Even children handle studies, tuitions, sports at the same time. All this results in a less effective memory. Doing less and doing it without interruptions can be the key to being more productive. Stanford University study provided research showing that chronic multitaskers are even worse at multitasking than those who work on one task at a time. Here are some tips to get rid of the effect of multitasking. Making a to-do list. Not many people have a habit of making a list of tasks to be done during the day, whereas it's the first step towards effective time management. Once your list is ready, you can plan your day accordingly, which reduces the stress. At the end of the day, when you see all the tasks done, it gives you satisfaction. Prioritization. Once your to-do list is ready, <clears throat> you have to do your work according to their importance and urgency. You will realize that by doing just 20% of your tasks, most of your urgent work is done. The rest, 80% can be handled according to the time available or can be addressed at a later stage. Avoid distractions. This means that you should concentrate only on the task at hand and avoid unnecessary distractions which may delay your work, like turning off all phone and email notifications, check your email at certain times, Resisting the temptation to switch windows as soon as you receive a new one. 
Seek a quiet place to work. This will result in finishing your task quickly as you will be able to concentrate better in a quiet environment. Organize your workplace. It's hard to focus on a task when the other things are scattered across your home or workplace. If you are working on uh, one subject or a project or even a recipe, keep only those, uh, those things around which are related to it. Schedule time for individual tasks. Assign a particular time for each task and try to finish that task in the given time. Meditation. Meditation in other words means attention training. Studies have shown that meditation helps improve attention, thus helping people lead a more peaceful and happy lives. It helps people to focus their attention on the present, which in turn reduces their stress and worries. How meditation improves concentration. Thalamus is known as the gatekeepers of senses, it funnels the sensor information, smell, touch, sound, deeper into the brain. If sensor information reaches the brain, only then do we become aware of it. And that information or the agent generating that information disturbs us. Meditation has been found to reduce the incoming information. This means we are able to focus on what we are doing, concentration unhindered. This is why meditation improves concentration. Meditation improves cortical thickness. Scientists have found meditation is associated with a thicker cerebral cortex and more gray matter. The parts of the brain link it to memory, attention span, decision making, and learning. But it's not necessary to meditate silently for a year or so. One study found people who meditated at least once a week for four years showed increased cortical gyrification, the folding of the cerebral cortex that helps people process information. What is meditation? Meditation is the process of empowering and recharging the mind by channelizing our thoughts in the right direction while being in right conscious, consciousness of the self. Meditation is not just focusing on a point or stopping all the thoughts. The nature of the mind is to create the, the th thoughts. But many a time, while in stress or handling too many things, the number of the thoughts coming to our mind increase so much that we find it difficult to think clearly and concentrate on one task at hand. The process of meditation not only helps mind to relax by reducing the number of thoughts, but also leads to an attitudinal change by cleaning all negative and wasteful thoughts and consciously creating positive thoughts about the self and others. In simple words, meditation can be described as a three-step process. Reflecting the self, relaxing the mind, recharging the mind. Reflecting the self. We spend most of our time observing others and thinking about them. We even judged ourselves on the basis of what others think about us. Meditation is inner journey. In meditation, we sit comfortably, stop thinking about others, and start observing ourselves, who I am, what is my role in a particular relationship or a situation, how I am behaving, what kind of thoughts I'm creating in response to the stimulus. So it's a step of self-observation. Relaxing the mind. After observing the thoughts, now channelize the flow of thoughts on the basis of right knowledge, like a detached observer. Check the thoughts you are creating and match them with the ones you should be creating in that particular time. Choose and discard the disturbing and negative thoughts about yourself and others, thereby relaxing your mind by reducing their burden 
and choose what thoughts you should create. Recharging your mind. With the right consciousness about yourself and your inner powers and strength, now consciously make an effort to create right and positive thoughts and try to be in that consciousness. As you choose and create powerful and positive thoughts about yourself and others around you, you start feeling good and empowered, as if you are uh, being recharged. In meditation, we not only create positive thoughts, but also visualize them and try to be in that state of mind, experiencing it at the same time. Our mind is like a garden. If we want our mind to be powerful, we have to water it with good, powerful thoughts and clean the negative, wasteful ones on a regular basis. Meditation helps us to do that thus improving the quality of our thoughts, eventually leading to powerful mind. If we consider ourselves stuck in the traffic of thoughts, then install a traffic signal of meditation and see the difference. The traffic signal can help you remember the above three steps of meditation as follows. Red light reflecting the self. Stop everything outside and observe your thoughts inside. Yellow light, relaxing the mind, channelizing the thoughts. Check and choose the right thoughts in the right way of thinking. Green light, recharging the mind, conscious and continuous flow of positive thoughts. How to meditate when you don't have time. In today's fast life, we are too busy to take out time for ourselves. There is an easy way for that too. You don't have to take out special time for meditation. Whenever you get stuck in the traffic of your own thoughts, apply the rule of just a minute. A solution to recharge your mind, just a minute. It takes just a minute to transform your world. For example, you are going for an interview and thousands of uh, thoughts are coming in your mind about whether I will be asked a difficult or easy questions. What if I'm not selected? What if I won't be able to answer something? What will happen to my life? For how many more days I have to search for a good job? Am I capable of clearing the interview? Instead of wasting your time and mental energy like this, take out a minute to check and choose and change your thoughts which empowers you and helps you to perform better. These thoughts will replace any disturbing or negative thoughts which might be coming in your mind. But the most important thing is taking out this one minute for yourself.